Joining you now to detail the impact of the recent liquidity squeeze as well as the trends from the wedding season, S. Subramaniam, the CFO of Titan, joins in. Mr. Subramaniam, good morning. We'll talk about the wedding season in a bit. But before that, you know, you've been saying repeatedly that um, during times of such liquidity crisis, uh, generally there is a shift of share from unorganized players to more credible organized players. But um, can you just quantify that for us? Throw some more color on what the situation is on the ground currently. Well, quantifying that would be difficult, yeah. but uh, clearly market share uh, gains are visible. Uh, we are seeing a, a lot of jewelers uh, in, under the credit squeeze at this point in time, and therefore that inhibits their uh, ability to expand, put in more inventory, buy inventory, and so on and so forth. We do hear also delays in payments to vendors uh, as a normal phenomenon these days. So it's it's clear that the credit squeeze is, help, is, is impairing their efforts to build their sales. Uh, that's where I think Titan is far better positioned because uh, of the strength of our balance sheet. Um, so clearly, um, we are seeing that. Um, how much uh, would that actually be in terms of quantity? It's very difficult to, um, to, to, to give a number now. Uh, no, difficult to give a number. Good morning, Mr. Subramaniam. I take your point on that specifics. But uh, broadly, are you seeing it in uh, more people, uh, more footfalls? or more uh, 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 sales at your end? Actually, yes. Uh, I think after the rupee has uh, strengthened, mm. uh, you know, after that, that period of weakness, uh, uh, it's in the ballpark of 70 rupees, uh, gold rates are attractive. And mm. uh, clearly we are seeing uh, a revival in spending uh, uh, after the Diwali season as well. Mm. Uh, that's, that's the good news. Mm. Um, and uh, the wedding season is a strong one. Mm. Um, so I think it's helping uh, people like us uh, quite considerably. Actually, when we last spoke to you, I'll actually quote, quote what you told us. You said you saw 27% growth in the retail end in the first 29 days of the festive season up to Diwali. Uh, did the good times continue? It's a month or more than a month since Diwali. Yeah, it's, it's been good, yes. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want to give a number, but All it's right. been good. Okay. okay, so, um, well, you're not giving us any numbers, but at least you can tell us a little bit about market share because you started by saying that market share gains are visible. What is your ballpark market share, um, you know, right now? What, what is, how is the, versus the overall market? See, the estimate is about 5%, okay? And we've been saying that if we were to achieve our target of two and a half times our, our revenue of last year, we should be uh, close to a 10% market share over the next five years. The assumption here is that the market may grow at around 5 to 7%, mm. and we would be growing at a CAGR of around 20%. That is the assumption. Um, now, the 5 to 7% is, uh, is assuming that gold prices are, are in the ballpark of what they are today, um, and that there's not a steady increase in gold prices, because typically what happens is gold prices do, uh, you know, when prices go up steadily and, and the consumer believes it's going to be a one-way path, uh, then they tend to buy ahead of time, which means mm. the growth for the industry gets better. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if gold prices are volatile, as they have been in the last three, four years, it, uh, it should generally be uh, a 5 to 7 percent, which is, in a way, uh, 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 close to inflation rates. Okay, That's the industry growth otherwise. Okay. Um, so in the context of that, uh, our point of 20 percent means we should be gaining market share significantly. Fair point. Uh, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, the season gone by, wedding season, of course, it continues. But in the season so far, what was the share of uh, gold jewelry versus studded jewelry? And what is usually the margin difference for you between the two? Well, we don't give the margin difference, but okay. the margin difference is substantial. We don't quantify it. Uh, the uh, Typically, in a wedding jewelry uh, season, Plain gold jewelry does much better, but uh, what's heartening is that our, st our uh, studded uh, uh, targets have also been met. Uh, that's a good sign. Mm. Uh, people are buying. Uh, we do have some collections which have come up recently, which are doing quite well. Um, so overall, looks looks pretty good. Yeah. Studded okay. makes more money. Studded studded share will be always higher. The mar margins in studded will, higher. will be much higher than in okay. plain gold jewelry. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, you know, a recent trend that we've noticed, say over the past uh, 8 to 12 months, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, is luxury going to small towns. Uh, basically, premiumization. We're seeing it in the, you know, um, products like bikes. We're seeing it in the FMCG space as well. Uh, are you seeing higher demand in tier 2 and tier 3 cities of your higher value products, maybe in the watches, eyewear business? No, just forget watch. watches. Yes, they are doing better. Yes, I'm not saying no. But even in jewelry, we've had uh, very, very high sales, individual sales in smaller town India, okay, where people are buying uh, solitaire strings um, uh, at, uh, you know, at, at significantly higher price points than even people in the urban area. So we've seen that happen uh, even there. Uh, uh, we have a JV with Mont Blanc, if you remember, okay, yes. and we we see that a lot of the online sales actually are happening into tier two and tier three. So um, uh, I think rural India is not what it needs to be. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, their aspirations, they are no different from what it is in urban India. They want the same design, they want the same brand, they want the same experience. They buy luxury cars, uh, and they spend a lot of money on brands as well. So uh, I think tier two, three, three. We are seeing that in Tanishq. Uh, of course, we are seeing that in the watches and the uh, and, and the eyewear segment. But clearly in Tanishq as well, we are seeing that very strongly happen. Mm. When we move to tier three, also mm. our sales can be quite strong. Okay. No, more than the aspiration, it's good that uh, that aspiration is backed by the money to pay for it. So that's extremely positive from a national angle. Uh, how many store? Uh, stores have you opened? What is the expansion seen for uh, F, uh, target for uh, FI19? What's achieved? We we have uh, 40 stores that we have planned, and uh, as of now, it looks like we should be possibly achieving that target. This would be the highest ever that we have done in any uh, financial year, and it looks like we could be uh, achieving that target. So anyway, anywhere between 35 to 40 is definitely happening. Uh, and will most of these be in tier two and tier three towns? I mean, as we discussed, you know, the aspiration for luxury has now traveled well beyond the metros. So do you see yourself expanding more in uh, smaller cities? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, when we talked about the expansion for the next five years, we said from the 250 stores that we had at the beginning of this financial year, we said we'll move to 400 stores. Mm. But we also said we will move from 150 towns to 250 towns in the same period. So 150 new stores in 100 new cities or towns. That is, is, uh, is what we are looking at. Therefore, a lot of stores are going to be in tier two, tier three, uh, uh, for sure. And typically, they break even faster, do they? Uh, not necessarily. They may because the, the, the size of the store will be uh, smaller uh, uh, based on the mm. demand in that uh, market. But the costs also will be lower. So yeah. they should typically break around, break even at the same time that the other okay. stores do. Okay, no, I thought rents, etc., would be much lower. Uh, finally, just uh, any other details on ILNFS that uh, your investors need to know? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. We have no information. I'm sure nobody else has in the market as well. All so right. we just need to wait and see uh, how that pans out, yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Subramanian, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us uh, with your take on how the wedding season and the festival season has been for Titan. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, just I look at the market. I think those are Ashok sales. I'm uh, sorry okay. to interrupt. No, no, I please go ahead. Uh, get that on board. The stock is down now almost 5%. Uh, the sales have come in at 13,121 units versus mm, Nomura's expectations of yeah, 14,300. Mm. So remember we were saying how the uh, the big takeaway this month has been the slowdown in commercial vehicle sales and Ashok Leland is a pure play commercial vehicle maker, right? The others have other businesses as well. So they're getting hit the hardest. A 9% fall is what they've seen on a year-on-year -year basis. This is very troubling actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, 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 interest uh, or rather credit is available to a lot of these people. I mean, there are they, they in fact have their own in house uh, credit offerings mm -hmm. uh, that is, group companies. Uh, the South is extremely well supplied with the Sundaram Finances and the uh, MMFSLs and uh, Sriram Transports. Sriram Transport and Sundaram are actually South based companies. Chola, mm -hmm. they're very well supplied, and these are not companies which are under any stress at all, mm -hmm. uh, despite the NBFC issue. Uh, the, I mean, this is a little troubling. This looks like demand's gone down pro for probably other reasons and not because of credit. Uh, it's 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 troubling from a, if you extrapolate it uh, at a macro angle as well. But uh, at the moment, uh, 
the Ashok Leyland uh, sales, uh, Ashok Leyland share has gone down by 4%. It's not affected the rest of the market. Today, uh, today the mid-caps continue to really fire up. You it's, know, uh, yeah. it's, I think Trump has long gone India. <laughs> well, I don't Indian know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I can just say from Ashok Leyland's numbers, you know, the, med the light commercial vehicle pocket is doing fine. For the entire sector, that's fine. It's a medium and heavy commercial vehicle segment, which is under quite a bit of pressure. And that's uh, surprising because, you know, we were talking about an infrastructure pickup, etc., pickup in cement demand. That's not playing through this month. So this time, if you look at the overall numbers, I think it's 13,000 units compares to an average of 15 to 20,000 units that they've done over the past five months. So it's slowed down to 13,000 units versus 15 to 20,000 units over the past five months. So and you know, it's the... very important that you're comparing two different seasons altogether. Yeah. If you had said year on year, one can still take it. But if this is, you know, in the monsoon months, if that was the level of uh, consumption, yeah. and it's fallen so much at a time when activity should pick up, India consumes two thirds of what it wants in the second half compared to what it consumes in the first half because of the nature of monsoon. That's why we call it the busy season uh, starting October and the previous uh, six months are called the slack season. So if the slack season gave you a 15,000 run rate per mm, month yeah. and the busy season is given you, it's only the first month, we hope of course things will improve from here on. This is a bit disheartening. Uh, let's hope it's one off and uh, we'll speak to the management when we can.